Hey everyone, welcome to my Mojang YouTube channel, I'm Karo. In my previous video, I have explained to you how the Ottoman Empire came to be. Today, let's check where they went. So I'm going to take to a different city, let's check which one. After having taken the city of Bursa, which served as their capital until 1369, the Ottomans went further and conquered Hadrianopolis in 1369. The Ottoman Sultan Murad I led a successful campaign to conquer the Byzantine city. It was at this time that the city was renamed Edirne, becoming the capital of the Ottoman Empire for 90 years. Super cannons were used during the conquest of Edirne and they were made by a Hungarian. The city is also the birthplace of Mehmed the Conqueror who took the throne at a young age of 19 after the death of his father Murad II. After Edirne, they went even further and conquered one of the most essential cities of that time, Istanbul. With more than 2,600 years of history, having been a part of numerous empires, Istanbul has always been considered as an extremely important city, because whoever controlled this city gained power over enormous economic and trading hub. Although Mehmed converted many churches into mosques, he did not suppress the Christian faith itself. There were practical reasons for this. Sultan acting through their religious leaders. These communities were given their own parts of towns in which to live and worship. They were given a great deal of freedom to lead their li lives according to their particular faiths. So, when Fatih Sultan Mehmed, Mehmed the Conqueror, conquered Istanbul, he turned one of the most important uh, holy places of uh, Christianity at that time, the Hagia Sophia into a mosque. It was a very important event because this was one of the world wonders at that time and this was the biggest uh, holy place and the tallest building in Europe at that time and that's why it was important that he turned it into a mosque. As you can see the minarets were added later and today it's functioning as a museum. Uh, right in front of it you can see the Blue Mosque. In English it's called the Blue Mosque, in Turkish Sultan Ahmed Camisi. It was built by Sultan Ahmed in the 17th century. It was a competition against the Hagia Sophia. This is the only mosque in Turkey which has six minarets and it received the name Blue Mosque because of its bluish color. During the Ottoman Empire, economy and life were blossoming. As I have mentioned before, tulip as well as gardens were essential during Ottoman rule because of the tulip era was a transitionary period in the Ottoman Empire that was marked by cultural innovation and new forms of the elite. Sultan Mehmed renamed the city Istanbul, meaning the city of Islam, and made the new capital of the Ottoman Empire. Istanbul became a dominant international center of trade and culture. Also, there were the codes of Mehmed II, low position military order, and he was the longest reigning sultan. He took Constantinople, and by this conquest, the Ottoman state became an empire. This is a place called Topleva Palace. It was built by Fatih Sultan Mehmed, Mehmed the Conqueror, and this was where the sultans lived. He had it built after the conquest of uh, Istanbul, and this was the main gate, which could only be seen by the public. There is another gate as well from here, but the public couldn't go for further than this. So um, it's called Top Kapı Palace because top means cannons. And they used very special cannons at the conquest of Istanbul, which were designed by Fatih Sultan Mehmed himself. So how is Top Kapı Palace? Let's have a look at inside. This is the first garden, the Janissary Garden. It was called Janissary Garden because that's where the Janissary soldiers were staying. They were made up by the Def Shirme. In the 14th century, the Devshima system was created. This required conquered Christians to give up 20% of their male children to the state. Although they served as slaves, some of the converts became powerful and wealthy. 
Many were trained for government service for the Ottoman military. The death shame system lasted until the end of the 17th century. This is where the empire was governed for a good portion of its history. The imperial council met ever since the empire was established. Sultans didn't attend the council's meetings personally, instead they would follow from another small room separated from the meeting, so that they could listen to the conversations. The sultan's life was run by rituals copied from the Byzantine court. For example, the sultan wore his silk robes once and then they were discarded. Many now are preserved in Tokkapi Palace. The Ottoman Empire reached the peak of its power during the rule of Selim's son, Suleiman the Magnificent. Suleiman came to the throne as one of the wealthiest rulers of the world. Some of the most popular forms of art included calligraphy, painting, poetry, textiles, and carpet waving, ceramics, and music. Ottoman architecture also helped define the culture of the time. Elaborate mosques and public buildings were constructed during this period. Science was regarded as an important field of study. The Ottomans learned and practiced advanced mathematics, astronomy, philosophy, physics, geography. Suleiman created a uniform system law and welcomed different forms of arts and literature. Many Muslims considered Suleiman a religious leader as well as a political ruler. The Ottomans were no known for their achievements in arts, science and medicine. Istanbul and other major cities throughout the empire were recognized as artistic hubs, especially during the reign of Suleiman the Magnificent. Starting from the 1600s, the Ottoman Empire began to lose its economic and military dominance in Europe. Around this time, Europe had strengthened rapidly with the Renaissance and the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. Other factors such as poor leadership led to the weakening of the empire, led to the fall of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire officially ended in 1922 when the title of Ottoman Sultan was eliminated. Turkey was declared a republic in 1923.